Day 8 for souls who are in purgatory. Opening prayer. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed for souls, and an ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. A font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Jesus said, Today, bring to me the souls who are detained in purgatory and immerse them in the abyss of my mercy. Let the torrents of my blood cool down their scorching flames. All these souls are really loved by me. They are making retribution to my justice. It is in your power to bring them relief. Draw all indulgences from the treasury of my church and offer them on their behalf. Oh, if you only knew the torments they suffer, you would continually offer for them the arms of the Spirit and pay off their debt for my justice. Most merciful Jesus, you yourself have said that you desire mercy. So I bring into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls in purgatory, souls who are very dear to you and yet who must make retribution to your justice. May the streams of blood and water which gush forth from your heart put out the flames of the purifying fire that in that place too, the power of your mercy may be praised. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the souls suffering in purgatory, who are enfolded in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. I beg you, by the sorrowful passion of Jesus your Son, and by all the bitterness with which his most sacred soul was flooded. Manifest your mercy to the souls who are under your just scrutiny. Look upon them in no other way than through the wounds of Jesus, your dearly beloved Son. For we firmly believe that there is no limit to your goodness and compassion. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The Lord said to St. Faustina, When you go to confession, to this fountain of mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul. In the tribunal of mercy, the sacrament of reconciliation, the greatest miracles take place and are incessantly repeated. Here, the misery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Come with faith to the feet of my representative. I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest. I myself act in your soul. Make your confession before me. The person of the priest is, for me, only a screen. Never analyze what sort of a priest it is that I am making use of. Open your soul in confession as you would to me, and I will fill it with my light. Were a soul like a decaying corpse, so that from a human standpoint, there would be no hope of restoration, and everything would already be lost. It is not so with God. The miracle of divine mercy restores that soul in full. From this fount of mercy, souls 
draw graces solely worth the vessel of trust. If their trust is great, there is no limit to my generosity. Prayer of Consecration to the Divine Mercy Jesus, the Divine Mercy, I consecrate my entire life from this day on to you without reserve. Into your hands, I abandon my past, my present and my future from this day forward. Make me a true follower of your teaching. Let your Divine Mercy image protect my home and my family from all the powers of evil in this world today. May all who venerate it never perish. May it be their joy in life, their hope in death, and their glory in eternity. Amen. Prayer to Divine Mercy for the Unborn For all helpless little children, who die in the womb of their mother. I pray that all of these little souls will be given eternal life by our Lord Jesus Christ through his divine mercy. And I beg Jesus that he shows his mercy also to the parents of these children, especially to the mothers who don't know what they are doing. Lord, enlighten them and give them a deeper understanding of the value and beauty of life. May your divine mercy forgive them all the hurt they have caused and show them the way of eternal life. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 54, verses 7 to 10. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing anger, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, and I will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed says the Lord, who has compassion on you. The word of the Lord. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, God always forgives. God never gets tired of forgiving giving us and no sinner is beyond God's mercy. These are powerful quotes of Pope Francis on God's mercy. Quotes filled with hope, promises and possibility of a new start, a new life. These courts also remind us of the vertical dimension of the experience of God's mercy that should propel us in our horizontal deliberations and dealings with others. Yes, after having experienced God's mercy, a God who never gets tired of forgiving us. We should never get tired of forgiving, understanding and embracing others with all their weaknesses and fragilities. 
experiencing God's mercy beyond measure in our personal lives. We can't but be channels of the same mercy to one another. Today, I would like to reflect with you the most powerful and profound parable on God's mercy depicted in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, the parable of the prodigal son. In fact, the central figure in this parable is not the son, but the father. Yes, it's a parable about the merciful love of our heavenly father. To experience this merciful love of the father, the prodigal son had to make a very long journey. A journey inward, a journey outward, a journey upward, and of course, a journey forward. A journey very relatable with our own life journeys as well. Now, we'll recapture four significant moments on this journey. Two sets of four R's. The first, recollect and realize. The second, repent and return. The third, reconcile and reconnect. And the fourth, rejuvenate and rejoice. We'll start our journey with the first moment. Recollect and realize. The prodigal son recollected the merciful face of his father and in turn realized that how far he is from the loving embrace of his father. The most difficult journey is the journey in word. Amidst busy schedule of time, when we too find time to recollect the marvelous moments God has been merciful to us in our life journey. It can't but lead us to a powerful realization of our own present state of life, our unworthiness, brokenness, fragmentations within, and aloofness from the presence of the Lord. As a result of this genuine recollecting and realizing. Our heart will definitely long for wholeness and a deeper intimacy with the Lord to go back to the first love. As we read Revelations chapter 2 verse 4 to 5. But I have this against you that you have abandoned the love that you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. This realization takes us to the second powerful moment. Repent and return. The prodigal son goes through a profound interior transformation, a metanoia, a change of heart, an indescribable spiritual conversion experience. The repentance of the prodigal son was not a passive but a proactive repentance that propelled him to make, make a return journey. A journey into the loving, merciful embrace of his father, where he finds the real joy, meaning, and fulfillment 
in his life. An embrace in which the heart speaks to the heart. I will remember your sins no more. Hebrews chapter 8, 12. I cast all your sins into the depth of the sea. Micah chapter 7, verse 19. After repentance, the return journey takes completely a new route and life will never be the same before. Don't forget that even if you have gone far, far away, there is always a room for you to come back. We have a God who welcomes each one of us with an outstretched hands, rather outstretched heart. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 7, we have heard, For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will gather you. I will embrace you. Let's reflect the third, the most powerful experience in this journey is to reconcile and to reconnect. Here we find the key to understanding the whole mystery and beauty of this experience of reconciliation that is relationship. Yes, we have a God who values relationship that's evident through the incarnation, the Paschal mystery. A person who values relationships, reconciliation becomes really a meaningful and joyful experience. Among different powerful experiences of reconciliation, Today, I would like to make note of three experiences. The first, reconciliation is a divine experience. The second, reconciliation is a healing experience. And the third, reconciliation is an experience of deliverance. The first, reconciliation is a divine experience in which we recapture the lost divine face and nature of God within us. Genesis chapter 33 presents an emotional episode of meeting of two brothers, Jacob and Esau. Verse 4, we see an embrace of reconciliation. And verse 10, Jacob tells Esau, For truly, to see your face is like seeing the face of God. As to forgive is a divine experience. The second, reconciliation is a healing experience. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities and by his bruises we are healed. Yes, we are completely healed from all old baggages of wounds and reconciliation uplifts our soul to another level of anointing and healing. The third, reconciliation is an experience of deliverance. Here I would like to specifically connect reconciliation with the sacrament of reconciliation. Truly an embrace of God's mercy. When Jesus instituted the sacrament of reconciliation, Jesus very clearly speaks of the power of deliverance that we experience at the moment of reconciliation, Matthew 16, 19, John 
chapter 23 verse 20 we come to the third reconciliation is an experience of deliverance here i would like to specifically connect reconciliation with the sacrament of reconciliation truly an experience an embrace of god's mercy when jesus instituted the sacrament of reconciliation in matthew 16:19 john 20:23 jesus very clearly speaks of this power of deliverance that we experience at the moment of sacrament of reconciliation and now we move to the fourth and the highest moment of this journey of prodigal son towards this embrace of the mercy of the father and that is to rejoice and rejuvenate the prodigal son experiences deep within the real happiness in the presence of his father at the embrace of god's mercy and the real pain in going astray from the mercy from the home of his father just as the cry of david in psalm 51 verse 11 do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your holy spirit from me deep within prodigal son understands whatever the world offered him the pleasures luxuries and everything were momentary in fact it's a lie and the truth that is the lasting happiness can only be found at the presence of the lord at the embrace of god's mercy this rejoicing and happiness that one experiences at the embrace of god's mercy permeates to the whole life dynamism of that particular person that is rejuvenation that a person can't but be full of vibe full of energy passion on fire with the love of god and love for another that's the beauty and strength of the embrace of god's mercy the significant question here is after having experienced god's merciful love can the prodigal son again go away from his father's house can he spend money immoderately no he can't such profound was the experience of the mercy the embrace of his loving father i would like to conclude with a profound prayer of god's mercy by saint faustina from her diary divine mercy in my soul help me o lord that my eyes may be merciful so that i may never suspect or judge from appearances but look for what is beautiful in my neighbor's souls and come to their rescue god bless closing prayer eternal god in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself the lord be with you may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit
Let us go in the peace of Christ.